The legendary Boeing 767 was instrumental in creating the middle-of-the-market category, which is highly sought after today. Yet, the technology of 767, which dates back over 40 years, is showing signs of age and is struggling to comply with modern-day requirements. However, there are indications that forthcoming enhancements to the 767 could empower it to match or even surpass the performance of current aircraft in its class. If these advancements are realized, airlines around the globe would be keen to acquire the modernized Boeing 767. To grasp why airlines might covet a revamped 767, we must first delve into the reasons behind the construction of the original model. After the Boeing 747 introduced the twin aisle cabin in 1970, Boeing began developing a successor to its earlier single aisle planes like the 707. The new design was to have twin aisle seating but a slimmer profile, making it suitable for smaller airports where the 747 couldn't land. Initially called the 7X7, it was meant for short flights. However, based on customer feedback, Boeing reimagined the aircraft as a mid-size plane capable of transcontinental flights. One interesting thing was that the 767 was originally planned to have a third engine on its tail. This concept was revised after Airbus introduced the twin jet design with the A300 in 1972. By the mid-1970s, partly due to the A300 success, the twin jet configuration had become the norm for commercial planes. The 7X7 project targeted the mid-size, high-density market, focusing on routes between major cities. The 70s was a period of rapid technological progress in aviation, and Boeing leveraged new technologies like high-bypass turbofan engines, advanced flight deck systems, and lighter, more aerodynamic structure. At the same time, Boeing was also working on the 7S7, a mid-size narrow body that would later be known as the 757. Managing two innovative designs at once was quite a feat, but by February 19, 1978, the 7X7 was officially named the 767, with three variants in the pipeline, the 767-100, the CVA 767-200, and a Trijet 767MR-LR, which was an early version of what would later become the 777. The Boeing 767 was launched on July 14, 1978, with United Airlines as the first customer, ordering 30 of the 767-200 variant. The 100 variant was dropped due to its overlap with the 75. The 767 introduced several pioneering features, such as a new wing design that increased lift, enabling faster climbs and fuel savings of up to 30%. It also provided a quieter flight experience than other Boeing models. The 767, along with the 757, was the first Boeing jet to use high-bypass turbofan engines. Early 767 buyers could choose between Pratt and Whitney JT-9D or General Electric CF-6 engines, a first for Boeing to offer multiple engines engine choices at launch. Both engines offered a minimum thrust of 214 kilonewtons, enough for flights across North America or the North Atlantic, with a range of up to 3,900 nautical miles. Subsequent 767 models came with significant improvements in seating capacity and range. The 767-200 and 767-200ER could seat 174 to 245 passengers, with the 200ER having a much longer range of 6,590 nautical miles compared to the 200s 3,900. The aircraft family saw further expansion with the introduction of the larger 767-300 in 1983 and its extended range version, the 767-300ER in 1984. Both newer models boasted a 20% increase in passenger capacity, with the 767-300ER having the capability to fly non-stop for 5,990 nautical miles, equivalent to 11,090 kilometers. The 300 variant also added another engine engine option, the Rolls-Royce ARB 211, and the largest variant, 767-400ER at 200 feet long, could carry 243 to 409 passengers and had a range of 5,625 nautical miles, powered only by General Electric CF-6 and Pratt and & Whitney P. W-4000 engines. Boeing also further introduced the 767-300F freighter variant in 1993 following an order from UPS Airlines. This model had a main deck cargo hold, reinforced landing gear, and a strengthened wing structure. The 767 was also Boeing's first wide body designed for a two-person cockpit, replacing the flight engineer with new electronics that allowed the pilot and co-pilot to monitor
monitor the aircraft systems directly. This innovation reduced costs for airlines, though many initially preferred the traditional three-person cockpit, which Boeing also made available. The 767 quickly became a favorite in the middle of the market sector, allowing airlines, especially in the Western Hemisphere, to connect busy routes with direct transatlantic flights. This led to the rise of point-to-point -point services, bypassing hub airports. The 767's versatility led to nearly 1,000 deliveries by 2000. However, by the millennium's turn, sales slowed and the aircraft was increasingly used as a freighter. Currently, Boeing might find it necessary to revitalize the 767's role in the passenger market to address several critical challenges. The 737 MAX 10 certification has been delayed, and there are concerns about the 737 airframe suitability for the MAX series. Meanwhile, Airbus's A321 XLR is gaining market share. A potential quick fix for Boeing could be to update the 767 systems to compete in today's midsize aircraft market, possibly through re-engineing. Both the Boeing 767 and the Airbus A320, which the A321 XLR is based on, were launched around the same time, making a re-engineing of the 767 theoretically more feasible than continuing with the 737 MAX program. Actually, re-engineing on the 767 wouldn't be a first. In 1990, a 767-300 delivered to British Airways was the first to be fitted with Rolls-Royce RB211 engines. However, the engine was heavier than other 767 engines, leading to structural issues and a temporary grounding by British Airways. The current 767 engines don't meet emission standards set for post-2027 production and delivery, necessitating a newer, eco-friendlier propulsion system. Boeing has options for re-engineing, such as the Genk's high-bypass turbofans and Rolls-Royce's ultrafan. But what if Boeing proceeds with updates? Actually, Boeing has considered another passenger variant for over two decades. In 2000, Boeing planned to launch the 767-400ERX with a 259-seat capacity slated for delivery to Kenyan Airways in 2004. Disclosures indicated that Rolls-Royce proposed its Trent 600 engines capable of 320 kilonewtons thrust for the project. Additionally, there was consideration for using either the Engine Alliance GP7172 or General Electric CF680 engines, each providing a thrust of 300 Ne. However, despite more fuel-efficient engines and extended range, this variant was canceled in 2001. Project faced challenges as Lada Air, another potential customer, was acquired by Austrian Airlines, and the necessary engines, initially developed for the ill-fated 747X, intended to rival Airbus's A380, were scrapped when Boeing concluded the market was non-existent. Consequently, without the engines and with only Kenya Airways' order on record, the 767 ERX's production was halted. The 767-400 ERX variant also suffered from poor timing, arriving too late to compete with Airbus's A330-200, leading to its discontinuation and Kenya Airways' switch to the 777-200 ERS. Then, in October 2019, it was reported that Boeing was considering a modified version of the 767-400 ER known as the 767-XF, which would feature a redesigned landing gear system to fit the larger General Electric Jenks turbofan engines. However, it was obvious that 767-XF was primarily envisioned for the cargo sector. Despite this, the concept of a passenger variant holds potential. Given Boeing's ongoing financial challenges, the prospect of developing an entirely new midsize aircraft could prove prohibitively costly. An alternative strategy might involve forming a new partnership similar to the original 767 project, or more feasibly, updating the existing 767 with new engines to maintain its viability in the market until economic conditions or industry trends shift. An enhanced Boeing 767, equipped with modern engines and cutting-edge systems, absolutely has the potential to rise as a leading contender in the highly competitive middle market sector of aviation. The proposed improvements are not merely about extending its operational range. They also encompass the integration of advanced technologies that position the aircraft as one of the most eco-friendly options available in the skies. Such advancements would not only reduce the environmental footprint, but also offer tangible benefits in terms of operational efficiency and cost effectiveness. Should Boeing opt to maintain the 767 primarily within the freight sector, the proposed performance enhancements would still render it an exceedingly attractive option for cargo carriers. The combination of increased fuel efficiency, greater range, and improved payload capacity would likely solidify the 767's position as a workhorse of the air freight industry, making it a top pick for companies looking to optimize their logistics and transportation strategies. In essence, whether for passenger travel or cargo transport, a reimagined Boeing 767 stands to redefine its role and leave a lasting impact on the future of aviation. However, certification remains a significant hurdle for any re-engineering project.
project. Boeing has yet to secure certification for its 737 MAX 7 and 10 variants and the 777X. The certification process is lengthy, and Boeing's recent quality control and safety issues may further delay approvals. In theory, a re-engined 767 is a promising proposition, particularly the right engine selection. It would allow Boeing to conserve materials and address its tarnished reputation following the 737 MAX and 787 incidents. Despite increased scrutiny, a successful re-engineing could position Boeing favorably with leading airlines eager for the new 767. So what do you think about this potential resurgence? If you have ever flown on a 767, please your thoughts about this aircraft in the comment section.